Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. Uh, we are ready for another devotional. Um, and we are going to have, uh, once again, a discussion on Colossians chapter 3 and 4 after last week's discussion on chapters 1 and 2. Before we do that, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father, for your love for us, and thank you for the grace given to us through your word. We ask that you would touch and minister to us in a way that becomes uh, so significant to us, that we might touch and minister to others with these truths that we find in, our, in your word. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're in Colossians, and we're again, we're, we're looking at how, we, so far we've looked at how Colossians chapters 1 and 2 have an impact on our lives, uh, our personal lives specifically, um, the things that we want and the things that we wear. Uh, this, uh, and you have to, for that, you have to go back and look at those devotionals. But now Paul talks about how Colossians chapters 1 and 2 affect uh, our worship lives. Um, he's, he's talking about our personal life. Now he's talking about our worship corporate worship life. This is how the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ has an impact on what church uh, should look like. And so this starts in Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 17, and I'll read those if you've got your Bibles with you. Um, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and, all, as, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So, uh, as he talks about, the again, the continues this impact of Colossians 1 and 2, people who are dead, buried, and raised in Christ are, first of all, in verse uh, 15, first of all, they are a people of peace. Um, you say, what should I, what, what should people in church look like? Well, people in church should be, should look like a peaceful people. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Unfortunately, too many times, um, you go through church situations and you go to churches in different places and not Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill is a perfect church, so it's never, never there. But in other churches, those other, other churches that are way out there, uh, there are, there are people who are going to church and having anything but peace. There's this, this Scored and there's dis dis arguments and uh, it's kind of a lot, a lot of lack of peace in, in the church because there's there's a little petty arguments and things like that and and I think the devil the enemy wants to sidetrack the church from its peace by doing these kind of things and we trade when we do this when we when we uh, opt to have these arguments and these these bitternesses and all these kind of rivalries and, and church power struggles whatever you want to call them. When we choose that, we opt out of this peace that Christ has for us. Um, the ruling factor in our life stops, uh, ceases to be peace and, and starts to become uh, these other motivations. Things I want out of church. Things I've got to have happen and that kind of thing. You know? And so, so we, la we lose and we forfeit our peace. But the Bible says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. We are called to be one body, and we were called to, to peace. This is, this is our major calling from God, that we, we live as one body in peace. And so we become a, a people of, of peace. We also become a people of the Word. Uh, the next verse says, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. And so we, we see this let, the word let there a couple of times. And you, you see, um, it says, it says let, the word of, let the peace of Christ rule. Let the word of Christ dwell. Um, so it's not a matter, again, it's, it's kind of like the wardrobe teaching ahead. It's not a matter of having to pray for peace or pray for the word to dwell in us. It's a matter of letting. It's not a matter of getting. It's a matter of, of letting. We don't have to get the peace of Christ or the word of Christ. We have to let the word of Christ and the peace of Christ rule and have its space and dwell inside of us. It's, it's allowing it, a lot, so much of Christianity is just allowing Jesus to be Jesus in us. It's not about stressing or straining or striving, you know, to be. I've got to do this thing. I got to be a better person. I got to stop doing these bad things. It's it's really a matter of just letting, let go and let God. That's a that's a good phrase. Just letting God have his way in our lives, allowing him the space, the dwelling space, and the ruling space in, in our lives. 
uh, Bible in, in Galatians chapter 5, Paul, Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fact that the Spirit is residing inside of us, the fact that the Holy Spirit is residing inside us, if we allow it, there is, there is fruit that comes from the Holy Spirit. The love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, jealousy, and self-control. And so it's a lot of a lot of Christianity is because of the, the theological facts of Colossians 1 and 2, because those are, are, are truths, then all we have to do is allow those truths to have their way in the way that we live our day-to-day -day lives. And then, then Paul also says it's not just a it's not just about peace and not just about the word of, of God. It's about gratitude. He, he, the word gratitude, there's some form of the word gratitude or thankfulness in every one of these three, three verses. And I think that goes back to um, the reason we can let uh, the peace of Christ rule in us and, and we can let the word of Christ dwell in us. And the reason for that is because of Colossians chapter 1 and 2. Because Jesus has done it all. Jesus has gone to the cross. Jesus has been buried. Jesus has been raised from the dead. And he allowed us to participate in his death, burial, and resurrection. And for all of that, we should have a, a rich feeling of gratitude and thankfulness that Jesus has allowed us to partake, to partake, to partake in such a wonderful thing, uh, salvation. And this should, be, this should create in every one of us a heart full of thanksgiving. So let's bow our heads together. Thank you, Father, for your word. We ask that your word would dwell richly in us. We ask your peace would rule in our hearts. We ask your, your revelation of, of the truths and our, our connection to Christ would create in us a, a gratitude and a thankfulness that uh, will just richly overflow everything that we do. I pray that my brothers and my sisters uh, would have a good day today, that you would bless us and keep us safe in your love and in your will for us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. I'll see you soon, and we'll continue to see what uh, Paul has for us in Colossians.